Okay, so let me just maximize. Okay, here is the question. Uh, we're just going to do this question about yesterday's topic. We're not going to do more than this. So in this question, as you see, it's about, oops, it's about Hassan. He has four blue pens and one red pen. He takes out one without looking and then he takes another. So he's taking from the pens one by one, not at the same time. Part A, copy and complete the table to show the possible out selections or the outcomes that he might get. So Yella, I wanna hear from you to tell me about uh, how to fill with me the table. Yes, Tala. Um. So there's B uh, uh, under the X B two uh, B one here. So yeah. look, Hala, we put two options. Why two options? Because he is choosing from the pens one, then another one. So um, he's gonna choose two pens. So that's why we put here uh, the first pen blue. So since he has many blue pens we just differentiate between them by putting blue number one blue number two blue number three and blue number four the last one is red same thing for the second time again it doesn't matter where you put to first and second so here the first one as Tala said b2 b1 yes type below it b3 b1 yes b4 b1 Yes. Then R B one. Yes, red with B one. What? Why did they put X here, Tala? Because uh, we can't uh, pick B one twice. Yes, Yani. If you choose blue number one in the first time, in the second time you can choose it. Yani, it's like four blue pens. Everyone has a number on it. If you choose the blue uh, pen that's marked with number one you can't choose choose it again because you took it already okay the second column yellow b1 b2 then x same thing since we can't have b2 with b2 b3 b2 yeah b4 b2 then r b2 yes and the last a uh, third column b1 b3 b2 b3 then we can't pick b3 twice yeah B4, B3, and R, B3. Yes, excellent. B1, B4, B2, B4, B3, B4. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can, this one you can do it. So yeah. R, B4. Yes, and same thing for the last column. You put B1 with red, B2 with red, except the last one. We can't have red with red because if you choose the red in the first time, you can't choose it again in the second time. Excellent, Tara. Thank you. So this is our table. Be careful to these types of questions that when you want to fill tables, you have to be careful. These are mutually exclusive outcomes. If they are not mutually exclusive, we can have B1 with B1 because you're choosing the blue color, then you put it back, then you're going to choose another color. Okay, type. Let's go to part B. Why are there X's down? We said it already. Because these are mutually exclusive outcomes. When he choose a blue color, we, he can't choose it again. Yani he will choose another blue color, not the same one. Now part C. Find the probability that part I, both pens are blue. Yes, Zena. It's a 12 out of... Twenty-five. Yes. Twelve out of twenty-five. Yes, twelve out of twenty-five. No, twelve out of twenty, not twenty-five. Remember, there are X's. Inside. Oh, we don't count them. No, Taban, we don't count them. Count them. There isn't an outcome. If there are, 
there are outcomes instead of the X, we count it. Okay. So it's 12 out of 20. We know it's five outcomes here and five outcomes here. Five by five is 25, yeah. but there are X's. Yeah, yeah. So it's 12 out of 20, yeah. yes. So someone else to do double I. Yes, Lean. Um, uh, the first pen is red. It's uh, four out of ten, 20, which is one out of five. The first pen is red here. We have this and this and this and this. So four out of 20. Which and is one over can, five. Well, can, you can simplify it as one over five. Yeah, the last one, one of the pens is red. The boys are not showing up today. Yes, Lean Arad. Um, uh, eight out of twenty. Any of the colors is red. Yes, eight out of twenty yes. because it can be the first or the second. It or doesn't. The second. Yes, excellent. Yes. So we have it one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight out of twenty. Yes. So that's what I wanted to discuss with you from last time. Now today we're gonna start with another new topic and the last one in the probabilities. So let me share my screen. This is 15.4. The last topic here is it about probabilities is experimental and theoretical probabilities. If you remember this lesson, I know there are a lot of calculations in the questions that we have in the presentation, but in the end, there is one only, uh, only one simple idea about lesson. So first, let's just know the difference between experimental and theoretical probabilities and how to find experimental probabilities. So, uh, probabilities as we know can be written as fractions, decimals, uh, between 0 to 1, or as percentage from 0% to 100%. And we know how to find the probabilities of equally likely outcomes. So the equally likely outcomes, as we said before, they have the same chance of occurring when you just like fair coin, heads and tail are equally likely outcomes. Favorable outcomes are outcomes in a specified event for equally likely outcomes. The theoretical probability of an event is the normal probability that we used to find in the previous three topics. And that we, used to find, we used to have questions, find the probability of getting head, find the probability of getting tail, find the probability of getting two red colors. That's called theoretical probability. This is the meaning of theoretical probability. So to find it, we divide the number of the outcomes that we are asked, asked about over the total possible outcomes. How to find theoretical probabilities? It's so easy. Like here in this example, uh, each letter of the word probable is written on a separate card. The cards are placed face down and mixed up. What is the probability that a randomly selected card has a consonant? So, yes, Muhammad. Yes. Um, okay. Yes, Muhammad. Okay, the word the probable has, uh, has one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Yes. And there is one, two, 
three, three vowels or yeah vowels. So a cons consonant uh, a five. Yes, we have excellent. five there. Yes, excellent. So what's the probability of getting a consonant letter? A five out of eight. Yes, excellent, Muhammad. Perfect. So this is it. The probability of getting a consonant is five out of eight. Taban, no need to write it as percentage uh, since you wrote it as fraction. The fraction is enough. Now here is another example find about finding theoretical probability. Two number cube cubes are rolled. What is the probability that the difference between the two numbers is four? We did a question like that before. Yes, Lean. Yes, teacher. Okay. Now we have um, um, three to one and four to two and five to three and six to four. Yeah. And also the same thing in the other side, um, which is one, two, three, two to four, three to five, and four to six. Yes. So it's eight out of... Eight out of? Out of 36. Out of, again? 36. So this is it. The, 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 there are 36 possible outcomes. We need a difference of four. You know, the numbers, the two numbers that when you, the two digits that when you subtract them, you get four. So we have four outcomes, Taban, with the other ordering. One with five and five with one. Two with six and six with two. On these numbers, when you subtract them, you get four. So it's four out of 36 in simplest form, one over nine. Now let's start talking about the experimental outcomes. Hello, experimental, it comes from the word experiment. Try, you're trying. So you can estimate the probability of an event by using data or by experiment. For example, if a doctor states that the opera an operation has an 80% probability of success, the 80% is just an estimation. He is not sure that it's 80% will be successful uh, emergency or successful, successful operation or whatever. So he's just estimating that 80% um, will be successful. Based on similar case history, why uh, yani he's estimating according to what according to the patient's history according to the times that the doctor tried these types of uh, operations and whatever each repetition of an experiment is a trial the sample space of an experiment is the set of all possible outcomes so the experimental probability of an event is the ratio of the number of times that the event occurs, the frequency of that event, over the number of times that you tried it. Okay, so this is how we write it. As a fraction, the number of times that the event occurs or happens over the number of times that we try. Experimental probability is often used to estimate theoretical probabilities and to make predictions. So they are not exact answers. This is one time, this is an example of finding experimental probability. Here the table shows the results of rolling the dice with unequal faces. See, here this is not theoretical. We say the, the most important thing about the Theoretical probability is to be fair. When you're not fair, that's not theoretical. This is unequal faces. Uh, 100 times. Find the experimental probability of rolling three. So this is when they threw the dice 100 times, he got 26 only one time. Uh, sorry, he got number one 26 times. He got number two 10 times. 
number three, 12 times, number four, nine times, number five, 14, and so on. Since we care about three, so probability of getting three, how many times did we get three? 12, oops, 12 out of, hi, let me, oh, I can't write it here. So this is, here. Anyway, it's like I here. It's like 12 times we got three out of how many times did we do it? 100. So this is how we write the probability. That is the probability of getting Three, okay. Type. Let's do more questions now. Here. Here, yellow. Who's gonna do this? Lean Arad. Yes. The table shows the results of a spinner experiment. Find the experimental um, prob probability. Spinning a four. Yeah. It's um, 14 out of 100. It's uh, 14 out of why 100? It's not the same example, Lean. This is a different one. It's out of 50. Out of 50, yes. You add uh, the frequencies of each one, 6 and 11 and 19 and 14, you get a total of 50. So the outcomes of four occurred 14 times out of 50 trials. So we write the probability as 14 out of 50 or seven over 25 in simplest form or 0 0.28 as decimal. Okay, thank you, Lian. A number greater than one. Yes, Omar. Omar. Oh, oh yes, teacher. Yes, Omar. Uh, spinning a number greater than two. Yeah. Uh, so it's three and four. Mm -hmm. uh, the which has a probability of uh, uh, 30, uh, 33. Out of? Uh, 33 out of 50. Yes, excellent. Greater than two means either three or four. So we need 19 and 14. So we add them together. It's 33 out of 50. Excellent, Omar. Here we have another example. This table shows the results of choosing one card from a deck of cards, recording the, the suits, and then replacing the card. So see, he's choosing the card, he, and then he replaces it back. He got the hearts five times, diamonds nine times, clubs seven times, and spades five times. Find the experimental probability of choosing a diamond. Yes, Nada? It will be um, 9 out of uh, um, 17. 9 out of 17? Why 17? Um, because it's the, uh, it's the result of all of... You need 26? To you need to add 5 plus 9, which is 14. 14 plus 7 is 20. What? 21. 21. Yes. And 5, 26. So it's 9 out of 26. 
This is the probability of choosing a diamond. Yes, excellent. Um, Nada. Type. What's the experimental probability of choosing a car that's not a club? Yes, Habib. Yes, teacher. Yes, Habib. Um, Hello. All the times that we did the experiments is 26. We need the probability of choosing not a club, anything but not a club. Uh, okay. 19. How did you figure it out? Um, 5 plus 9 plus 5. Yes, excellent. You either add 5 plus 9 plus 5 or by using what we discussed in the first topic of this unit by just doing since the total of them is 26 and the clubs is 7 and we don't need the 7 so you subtract 1 minus choosing the club. Okay, this is at 1 minus 7 over 26 which is also 19 over 26. Okay, let's do this last question, question one here. Yeah, let's start with you, Jude. Um, uh, Alicia has a, a biased coin. It has been altered to land on one side more often. This is the meaning of biased. Biased, yani not fair. A, a coin that is not normal. Yeah. She wants to find the experimental prob probability of getting ahead. Yeah. She spins the coin 10 times. She gets six heads and four tails. Yeah. What is the experimental probability of getting ahead based on these 10 throws? Give your answer as a decimal. She spins the coin 10 times. So I'm gonna just show the table for doing this 10 times. So it's uh, uh, as a fraction, it's six out of 10. Yes, and as a decimal? Um, as a decimal, it's... Easy, what's six over 10 as a decimal? Um, 0.6. Zero point six, yes, or six tenths, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jude. Yeah, let's go to part B of the question with uh, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, hi, teacher. Hi. Learn why this is not a reliable estimate for of the prob probability. Yeah. She spins the coin. Uh, Forget about the second sentence. It's related to the next part. Only explain why this is not reliable estimate of the probability, 0 0.6. The normal coins, Sarah, how much we get for head or tail? One. The probability, we have one head and we have one head one and tail. one tail. Okay, but the probability? Two. Two. Yeah. How do we write the probability? the number of times that we need the event over the total outcomes. Yeah. So, awesome. getting ahead, one over two. Mish one lahal ha, Sarah, wala two lahal ha. Okay, one over two. Probability is one over two, which is half, 0. Yeah. 0.5. Is half close to 0. 0.6? Uh, la, 0 0.6 is more than the half. Yes, it's more. They're not so close to each other. The probability yeah. is el, el one digit is making a big difference when you compare. So yeah. uh, why this is not reliable estimate? You can say because the coin is not bi is, a, is a biased coin. Maybe he did the experiment only 10 times and that's not enough to tell if it's... Yeah. Uh, reliable or not. Yeah. Okay. Type. Okay. Stay with us, Yellow, with the next part, Sarah. She spins the coin another 10 times. 
So this is the new table. In the first 10 times, she got six head and four tail. She did it another 10 times. Yani 10 times new and previous, she got three head. So the previous six with the new three is nine. And she got yeah. seven tails. Four plus seven, we have 11. Find the experimental probability of getting a head based on those 20 times. Sarah. I don't know. Ah, uh, Sarah. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah, teacher. Sorry, I mute myself by mistake. Okay. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, find the exper experimental property of getting a head based on 20 throws. Yeah. Uh, a head, it is, wait a minute. Um, uh, 9 over 20. Yes, it's 9 over 20. And as a decimal, if you want to write this as a decimal, it's going to be 0. 0.45. So see, it's, it's a big difference between 0. 0.45 and 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Let's go to someone no. else to do another part. Yes, Aisha. Aisha. Type. Let me go back to Lina Kumi. Yes, teacher. Um, she spins the coin another thirty times and gets nine heads and twenty-one tails. I find the experimental prob no, it's another question. No, 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 oh, yeah. it's related to I it. find the experimental probability of getting a head based on the on all throws so far. Yeah. Um, so take side. It's now it's good? No. Um uh, now Yani a little better. I can't hear you, Lynn. I wonder if the others can hear you. Now, teacher. Ah, it's better. Yeah. Okay. Um. Now, uh, after thirty times, she throws it again. It's eighteen heads. It's eighteen out of fifty. Eighteen out of fifty. 50. And as a decimal, the eighteen out of fifty is zero point thirty-six. Yes. Th okay. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. The one more. But yes, Habib. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Teacher, I can't read. There's a small window. Tayyip, wait. Another 50 throws. I will, I will show you the table. So he did it another 50 times. So, so far we had 50 and he did it 50 more times. We get 100 in total. Uh, he got 19 heads plus the previous 18 heads and 31 tails plus the 32 previous tails. So this is what we got in the end. And part E says find the experimental probability of getting a head Based on all the throughs so far. Um, thirty seven plus eighteen. Why thirty seven plus eighteen? Thirty seven is the is the total after adding nineteen to eighteen already. Thirty seven plus uh, um, over, 30, over 63. Musa, Muhammad, Habib, are you there? Yes, teacher. Sharf and Ale and Musa met. I think there is a problem. Yes, Habib. Yes, teacher. Yeah, no, it's better now. I can hear you. Uh, teacher, 37 uh, over 63. 
It's lagging again. Tab, let me try someone else to, just to make sure that the problem is from me or is it the mic or whatever. Tab, uh, let me hear from Lee Naraf. Lean. Yes, teacher. Yellow lean. Um, uh, find the experimental probability of getting ahead based on all the th uh, throws so far. Yeah. Um, 37 out of 100. 37 out of 100. And that's as a decimal is? 0 0.37. 0 0.37, yes. Type. Um, Habib, if you're still there, try to do your part F. Thank you, Lean. Welcome. Habib, are you there? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Part Explain F. why the last estimate for the probability of getting ahead is most re reliable. Reliable. One. Yeah. Reliable one. And it looks 0 0.37, we know it's not close to the theory, theoretical probability of choosing head that we usually know that it's half. But it's, it's the most reliable one. Why do you think that, Habib? Um. How many times did he repeat the experiment? Three times. Fifty times. One hundred times. Let's fifty. One hundred times. Oh, uh, okay. He did it one hundred times. Don't you think that it's, it's enough to do it? Yes, it's enough. Yes. Yani, look, <clears throat> it's based on the large number of throws. Yani, he did the experiment 100 times, and in the end, he got 37 <coughs> head out of 100. We already know from the beginning that this coin is biased. It's not a fair coin. So he, he should stop here and uh, say that, that it, this answer is, is reliable. But by the way, if he keep doing the experiment with a fair coin, he will be getting closer to half. That is the only point about throwing or uh, working with uh, experimental probability, probabilities. We don't have time. Five minutes extra um, to, to do the other part. But I just want you to remember experimental probabilities are probabilities that happens after trying or doing probabilities. And as much as you repeat your uh, experiment, you get closer to the theoretical probability that we know. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for watching and thank you for attending our classes. It was, I uh, hope it was very useful for you. Let's hope inshallah in, uh, to see each other next week. Okay. Uh, see you inshallah. Bye bye. If you have any question, you can just stay. Thank you, Thank you, you honey. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you, miss. You are more than welcomed. Thank you, teacher. Habib Tijud, you're welcome. Yeah, I have to close this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.